Welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest Jackson Hanks. And he's here today to share with us his new book, A Survivor Surrender, Healing One Layer at a Time. Jackson is a former mayor of his hometown, Palestine, Texas, having served three terms in that capacity. During his tenure, he received the prestigious Road Hand Award from the Texas Department of Transportation. Jackson is a board-certified lawyer in Texas with specializations in residential real estate law and farm and ranch real estate law. He owns and manages Texas First Title Company and is the author of A Survivor Surrender, Healing One Layer at a Time. So let's welcome to the show, Jackson Hanks. Thank you, Marianne. What a pleasure it is to have you here, Jackson. I'm so excited that we get to talk about your new book. We have known you for quite some time, and my goodness, I think this book is just really timely. Thank you, Marianne. It's uh, been a lifetime in the, in the making. Well, and for our listeners that are new to you, what is your background? Marianne, for the last 20 years, I have been pursuing self-improvement through personal growth as well as professionally. I'm a board-certified lawyer with two areas of specialization, former three-term mayor, former Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year, former and current head of several nonprofit agencies in our community trying to improve the community good. Well, that's a lot of stuff that you've been, you know, working on professionally, and I know a lot of people look at you as a leader. What are some of the nonprofits that you work with? The Texas Area Fund Foundation, a small community foundation here in Palestine. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm involved with the Action Fund, which is a community giving circle. And the one that really has my heart, a friend of mine started a small nonprofit called Blankets and Bears, and for the last 10 years we've raised funds and tried to raise awareness about the impact of trauma and abuse has on children um, in our local community by providing stuffed animals as well as new blankets to children who have been sexually assaulted, as well as once we became successful at raising funds then we were able to find agencies in the community that do great boots-on-the-ground work, but they're just not good at fundraising. So we were able to share what the generous donors gave us to help those nonprofits meet their objectives. Well, you're really good about helping um, the nonprofits that you're passionate about move ahead. I know you've made some great strides with the local nonprofits within your area. And it's interesting because it does come full circle to your book and the work that you do overall, you know, when we talk about self-improvement. So, you know, in regards to A Survivor Surrender, how did you come up with the book title and the book cover? I was working with a lady who will help with a social media campaign when the book launches. And she also helped with the book cover, and we were going down a particular path, and The images that she was showing me just didn't portray the feeling I wanted this book to have. And all of a sudden, the inner voice within just said, stop listening. So I said, I I need to stop for just a few seconds so I can listen and see what I'm being told. And sure enough, they said, book cover color, black. Okay. Um... Then I was shown the picture of an onion that had been sliced across the front, just as it shows on the cover of the book. Okay, I've got that part. And then the words came, a survivor surrender, healing one layer at a time, from the voice within. And Marianne, so many of us get caught up in our own busyness. We fail to just stop and listen and to feel that which is already inside of us. Isn't that the truth? You know, and it's interesting because when we look at our own personal journey 
and moving ahead and healing those pains. Sometimes the busyness can be a real distraction from looking at the pain that we have within. Absolutely. That's called avoidance. Mm-hmm. I used to be so, at it. Mm-hmm. I think we all have at one point or another. I know I have. I look back and it's like, yeah, I was really busy you know, in a period of my life. And, you know, it was really easy for me not to, you know, look or feel the pain I was feeling because I was so busy doing other things. Well understood. So why did you write the book? The honest answer, Marianne, is to help others heal from that which they don't want to talk about. Emotional trauma, both healed and unhealed, is the thread that connects us together. And so what do you mean by the thread that connects us together? Is, you know, my pain your pain as well and vice versa? No, not that way, Marianne. The thread that, that connects us together is I learned in doing the work. I worked with a couple of therapists before I met Sarah. Neither one of the first two were survivors. And I worked out of, walked out of the first gentleman's office, looked down the hallway to the left and to the right, and was looking for the call strongman guy who had a gray jacket that zipped in the back. So it's what I've learned is that it takes a survivor to understand the survivor. Sarah, mm-hmm. a wonderful counselor I worked with, was a survivor, and meeting and working with her has made all the difference in my life. And so this book is really an accumulation of your knowledge and insights that you gain during your own personal journey. Yes. And... My journey has been unusual, as it is for many of us, but I've taken the time to mind the gems when things happen and have learned to find the good in whatever it is that happens. Some of the most important self-growth moments happened after something emotionally painful, extraordinarily painful happened. Um, I came across a quote that I was unable to find attribution for, but the quote goes like this, I've never met a strong person who has had an easy life. And the chap, the, mm. the book is not just about being a survivor. There are lots of, in fact, most of the chapters are experiences that I've had, a couple as mayor, a couple as this and that and the others, and some are common things that we're just not and unusual things that we're not taught in our culture. Yeah, isn't that the truth? I mean, when we look at, you know, surviving child abuse or sexual abuse or other pain endured through our lifetime, a lot of times, you know, it's people don't know what to do with that pain or how to heal with it or even where to begin to talk about it. And so they just continue doing what I did for 47 years and to keep it buried even though I was mm-hmm. aware until I finally had an awakening experience that launched me on this healing part of the journey. Well, and so to touch on that, you actually mentioned your practitioners that you worked with in the preface of your book. Was there a specific reason for that? Absolutely. Two things. Number one, as a preface to the book, the title for the practitioners is Gratitude. I'm extremely gratitude to those five practitioners with whom I've worked off and on throughout my healing process, some more than others, but each has an area of expertise that is different from the other. And this book is not about me. It's about my experiences. It's about the wisdom that I've learned from doing the self-growth, the hard work, in hopes that I can bring help and healing to others. The five practitioners are folks who do one-on-one work. I'm not licensed as a coach or any kind of a counselor, and I'm not going to do the one-on-one work. I'll do workshops, but that's group work. Um, But these practitioners are extraordinarily gifted in each of their respective fields. They're in the book, and they're also on my website under the tab Meet Jackson. 
you can go to my website, jacksonhanks.com, go to the tab Meet Jackson, and underneath that you can meet my practitioners, and there's a link to each one of their respective websites and or information that they have posted on the web about themselves. Well, I, I found that information very useful, and I'm working with a couple people that are listed in your list as well, and so it's you know, you've got a really good group of individuals that um, that you've you are working with, have been working with, and so it's nice to have that list because a lot of times when things happen, people aren't quite sure where to turn, and it's good to have a list of um, people who have kind of been a lighthouse in, in many ways to kind of walk people through the darkness, such as yourself. Absolutely, a, a pathfinding light. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't you talk with with me about the effects of being sexually assaulted as a child? What, how did that, um, how has it affected your life and, and going into adulthood? Well, again, my story is the same as most survivors of this type of abuse say has impacted them. Many of us carry an incredible burden for years. I did. Uh, it certainly wasn't safe to bring it up in childhood. Um, there was either be going to be denial or punishment, um, or worse. Um, but those feelings that survivors care of this type of abuse carry, myself included, are the incredible feelings of shame, embarrassment, guilt. It's always my fault. It had to be my fault because my parents who were raising me wouldn't do anything to harm me. And that's how we, those are coping mechanisms. But it doesn't, those feelings of shame, guilt, embarrassment, and it always being my fault didn't just permeate the cubicle called sexual abuse. It impacted the entirety of my life. Then with the abuse happening as a child, I lost the innocence of youth. And as I was towards the end of doing my initial child within work with Sarah, I've always had good self-esteem, self-confidence, but it dawned on me that in the category of self-worth or self-worthiness, my bucket was empty, just flat empty. And that was another opportunity to work through, and I'm all the better for doing so. Well, I really applaud you, Jackson, for not only writing this book and being so courageous and so honest throughout this because it's helping so many people. You know, it's just a journey that many people find difficult to discuss. And once we start bringing things like this out of the closet into the light where we're able to have conversations about it, you know, that then comes that whole sense of being able to start healing this and that's ultimately what your book is designed for. Marianne, I could not have said that any better if you had asked me the same question that had asked me. <laughs> Perfectly said. Yeah. And men are, most men, many men, I was one of them, are very good at burying our feelings because we just don't want to talk about it. And that is the absolute worst thing you can do because those feelings don't lie dormant. They grow as you add to them, that you add to them until... By the time I started working through things, I had emotional dinosaurs to work through. Yeah. You know, men and women, I I think we've had conversations about this before in the past where, you know, with men it's, it's a little bit more difficult to open up and talk about. But, you know, these things happen, and, and for healing to take place, there needs to be some type of dialogue. Dialogue and a safe place to express yourself mm-hmm. with a, with a right person. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Well, are there other traumas that you endured as a child that you've worked through? Marianne, apparently um, I chose to have a smorgasbord. Um, yes. Ritual abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse mental, psychological, emotional abuse. And as a coping mechanism, most people don't put this in the category of abuse, but as a result of 
the childhood experiences, I developed a significant number of codependent traits as well. Which is really understandable. And when you mention that you chose this, do you mean from a sense that as a spirit, we choose our family when we come here because we're, we're looking to learn certain lessons? Is that what you meant? That's my worldview, absolutely. It may not work for everyone, but it certainly is mine. Yeah. Well, and, you know, again, a survivor surrender, healing one layer at a time, really does peel back those layers to be worked on one after another after another. And, you know, you really, um, I, I think that you are the perfect person to have written this book because you've really come out the other side and that's what a lot of people are striving to do when they have um, any type of abuse that's happened as a child or young adult that they are having to cope with. Absolutely. Well, and you talked about codependency and that impact. Why don't you share a little bit more about that for our listeners? Very briefly, Codependency permeates many areas of our lives, including, in, from my perspective, in my life, it impacted all human relationships that I had or have. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't realize how deeply impactful those traits were until I took a look at them um, very briefly, a bit of a humorous story. I bought uh, a couple of books by a therapist. I needed a quote. I went to the web, found one. Hers was the perfect quote for what I was writing and um, bought two of her books. The first one was way too deep for me, as busy as I was. It required intense work. The second one was Codependency for Dummies, written in the Dummy series. So I bought that book and started reading it, and I didn't read it for the wisdom I read it as a personal experience and by the time I was at the end of the book my emotional roller coaster had gone from apex to bottom and when I hit bottom then someone posted on Facebook 25 traits of adults who were emotionally abused as children and I read through the list and had 20 out of 25 in spades and got up and locked the office door and I haven't wept that deeply in years had an appointment with to see Sarah, my therapist, in 10 days. Says, okay, let's let's go back and reread the book for the wisdom that it has in it. And did so, went to my appointment, brought an extra copy of the book, as Sarah likes, likes to read, gave her a copy of the list. I didn't know where we were going to be headed. And I see the corners of her eyes start showing a smile. The corners of her lips start showing a smile. I'm thinking, okay, what's coming next? And... By the time she finished reading the list of the 25 traits, she was howling and cackling and just looked at me with this great grin on her face. And she said, Jackson, this is a fabulous list. This is exactly the person whom I met when we first start work, started working together, but you're not that person now. And as a codependent, we fall back into the trap of believing what others have told us instead of saying, okay, I've done the work. This isn't me. Get over it. That's all I needed to hear. Mm-hmm. It's just not the truth. No matter, it, it seems like no matter how much we do the work, sometimes we can fall back into that trap. Absolutely. So why do you feel it's important for everyone, including yourself, to work through emotional trauma, regardless of the severity of it? It's far better, Marianne, to face emotional things that come up when they're still fresh. Um, I remember a presenter at a title company conference many years ago. He had great Texas witticisms, and he said, bad news is like milk. It's best delivered fresh. (laughs) So in doing so, then we work through them in heart space when we are our authentic selves as opposed to working through them in the mental and ego process of I'm right, and why did this happen to me, and all those sorts of things. It's just we look for the lesson. What is this person, what is this experience trying to teach me? 
when we approach it as this pain that I'm feeling is a teacher, then, okay, that hurt. Let me find the gem that it brought into my life. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's interesting, you know, when we look at how many people have been impacted by some type of abuse and sexual abuse, you know, growing up, I mean, those statistics, they're pretty, I think it was like one in four is the last time I saw it. It's pretty high. And that's just probably not even everything that's been reported. So when we look at, you know, how we can help people, your book, A Survivor Surrender, is the perfect gift to kind of help them maybe open up their, their heart a little bit to start working on that process of self-healing. You know, in, a, in addition to helping other people have hope and healing from their traumas, what are some of the other gems that you mined from your book? There are all sorts of interesting things. Um, one thing I had to work through was always deflecting a compliment, thinking I was doing the right thing when, in fact, I was robbing the giver of their grace. Um, I intuited what is a perfect response, which sets a verbal boundary for which just shuts down the problem immediately. And I'm a firm believer in the importance of learning how to work with words to always, always, always couch things in positive terms. Words land on the people we speak to. Verbal words spoken to us land on our bodies. We have an invisible line at the base of our lungs that's a meridian that determines whether that is going to come into heart space or if it goes down into our emotional treasure trunk that we have to work through. And it's our culture is steeped in negativity, and I encourage all the listeners to read this chapter and learn how to phrase things differently than what we are taught. For instance, when I say, Marianne, don't forget to turn off the light, I've just imprinted you, and it's not a question of whether, it's just a question of when you are going to forget to turn out the light. That's not what I'm intending to communicate. So I stopped and thought about it, and we're not taught to say what we really mean, which is, Marianne, please remember to turn off the light and feel the difference in the weight of how that comes across. Yeah, it's completely different, and I'm so glad that you have that chapter in your book, The Weight of Words, because it does bring to light things that people a lot of times aren't even aware of. Absolutely. I mean, there's so many nuggets in this book. I mean, it's hard to really choose which one I felt like was a favorite for me, you know, and I, it kind of has me kind of wondering in your you know, personal growth process, you know, why was it important for you to challenge the beliefs you had over the years as an adult? It's very simple, Marianne. Many men and women looked up to our parents as children and wanted to become like one of them. I certainly did. After I took inventory of my beliefs, I realized I was the puppet that my parents had raised. And yes, though my dad died at an early age, my mom was proud of me. And I encourage everyone to do just as I did. Inventory your beliefs. Read and learn about views that are different from yours. And that way you can find out and feel what resonates with your heart and your soul, not just your mental mind. Then adjust your life recipe to suit what works for you and become and live as your authentic self. Unless we do this, we can unknowingly become a robotic wannabe of our mom and dad. I certainly was. I think a lot of us, um, while that might be fun for some people, most of us don't want to do that. You know, we, we look at just being our own um, individual that is separate from um, our parents and whatever lessons they may have um, have to learn. Well, Jackson, my goodness, I mean, we can talk for hours on your book, A Survivor Surrender. It is very profound. It's, I feel like, the perfect gift for someone who is looking to continue that spiritual path. Maybe they're starting it. Where can people connect with you and be part of your community and learn more about this book? 
best place to go, Marianne, is to my website, jacksonhanks.com. There's information there. Um, the resources that are listed in the book are also listed on the website. There are links to purchase the book. And with the music that is listed, it's all heart music that is it was healing for me in my journey. Um, and a lot of tunes that many people will not have heard of or listened to before. There's a link to where the musician or the, the group is selling their tune. And nearly all of the links have a button that you can listen to the tune before you decide whether you want to add it to your collection. Well, that is perfect. And I know that people can sign up for your newsletter, be part of your community, and uh, learn more about just a survivor surrender and um, and all the, the events and uh, great things that you offer. You know, Jackson, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. It's my pleasure, Marianne. I deeply appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you, Jackson. It has been such a pleasure to spend this time with you. And of course, to talk about your new book, A Survivor's Surrender, Healing One Layer at a Time. Again, you can pick up Jackson's book. It's on his website, jacksonhanks.com. And also it's available on Amazon and on Kindle. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You're listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Moments with Mary Ann airs every Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmaryann.com for more information.